Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Wahid Omar, Dr. Fazul, brothers and sisters. Pertama sekali saya ucapkan berbanyak terima kasih atas undangan ke Invest Malaysia 2020 pada pagi ini dan uh, saya juga nak ucapkan selamat hari kebangsaan, selamat hari Malaysia, selamat maal hijrah. Selamat apa lagi? Uh, selamat segala-galanya lah. Yeah. I'm extremely honoured uh, to be among such an august gathering of people this morning. And uh, allow me to, in my presentation, to divide my thoughts into two parts. One is uh, on the general stages of ideas in society and how we adopt the technology and on what the government is planning to do that we are planning to announce very soon, which is very relevant to what you are discussing today. And the second part is to dive in into the actual topic of 5G and uh, half of the discussion that you are having today. It is of great importance that we understand and comprehend the stages of ideas in society, in particular when it relates to the advancements of technology. For some of you in this room, you have heard this lecture from me for more than two or three times, I think. We tend to believe that ideas move in four stages. Number one, or stage one, is ideas that have arrived. It's like the world and all of us are already using it. Or technologies that have arrived and we have, or we are all being using it. And to a certain extent, these technologies are already at sunset. Not archive yet, yeah, but uh, it's already sunset. Stage two is ideas that are still in progress. People are aware of the new technology, but we need to accelerate implementation. I think this is one of the theme of the discussion this morning. How do we accelerate implementation and Sometimes, for government, it calls for a little bit of political will because you need to push the agenda forward in a certain way. You need to repurpose uh, budget and so on and so forth. You need to balance between, for example, uh, full 5G rollout and what is happening in the rural areas like in Sabah, Sarawak. East Malaysia and so on. Stage three is where ideas are still in battle. Um, people and government are aware of the new upcoming technology, but uh, we are still not there. And number four, or stage four, is where we are looking at 20 or 30 years from now. You don't really know exactly what kind of technology are we going to use? As a minister in charge of TV stations, I used to tell my friends, I say, uh, is TV still TV 10 years from now? My daughter don't watch TV anymore. And that's like since five years ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what are the kind of technologies? What are the physics and mathematics that will define uh, technologies of the future? At the same time, as government, we must know how to decide and what to decide. For example, we know that the, the contours of technological forces uh, brings upon you, uh, as I said earlier, all kinds of technologies. But at the same time, you have to decide uh, what to use and when to use. 
uh, we know that it is inevitable. But at the same time, you, we must also look at the how do we uh, embrace technology. Uh, I, I'm a big uh, uh, advocate for embracing technology. But uh, what technology, how do we embrace technology hands off? Do we still need rules and regulation? And uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, legal approaches, uh, trust me. Uh, so you have, to, you have to respect freedom. You want people to unleash their talent uh, to the full. But you cannot be hands off. As government, you cannot be hands off. So you need to decide. So my favorite example is I say, look, internet is inevitable. What kind? Uh, telephone is inevitable. What kind? Instant messages is, uh, messages is inevitable, but you don't have to tweet every second. Yeah. I think the government is very cautious and very serious of the fact that we have to look at the industries of the future, industries that will define what is going to happen 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. <clears throat> very recently, we decided to form the economic, the digital economy task force, which is chaired by myself and uh, YB Kyrie. The Secretariat is uh, MDEC, the CEO is here. We have identified four or five components, 15 work streams, and they are working very hard. But we are also planning to go forward. Uh, and very soon, I think the government will announce a proper uh, industry 4.0 and national digital roadmap, if you like. Uh, we will be looking at maybe five or six components. The digital talent development, the emerging technology, the economics of the whole thing, the society, and the governmental part of it. Please be rest uh, assured that whatever that we plan to do uh, will, will be something that we will do together. It is going to be a government, private, and civil society uh, uh, partnership. And uh, I'm therefore very happy that we are looking at one of the components that the government is, as I said, will, will be launching something on <clears throat> very soon, and that is the digital infra and data. Now, <clears throat> the second part of my intervention is really looking at something that the Prime Minister has just announced in Kota Kinabalu uh, on the 29th of August. And this is the Jalinan Digital Negara, or the Jandela. Now, Jandela aims to propel Malaysia to be a more robust and efficient digital nation. Through Jandela, we aspire to look at, among others, number one, enhancing the 4G coverage at populated areas, number two, Improving the speed of mobile broadband internet. Number three, expanding gigabit access via fiber optic networks. And number four, improving digital infrastructure planning through mapping data sharing collaboration. Uh, many of the CEOs of Telcos uh, gathered in this room were together with Dr. Fazol uh, in the digital lab <clears throat> that was uh, convened for what one month 
So Tan Sri, they actually went back to classroom lah. Uh, they, 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 I know they don't blame Dr. Fazol for bringing them together. They blame the minister, as always. You know. Jendela will be the platform to improve the nation's digital infrastructure under the TREF Malaysia plan, and this will be implemented in a phase uh, approach. And we are looking at a couple of phases. <clears throat> Number one, to expand the coverage of 4G network from 91.8 to 96.9 percent in populated areas, to improve mobile broadband speed from 25 Mbps to 35 Mbps, and to enable 7.5 million premises. Uh, with access to gigabit speed internet. <clears throat> more, specific, uh, more specifically, there will be some quick win initiative between this year and next year, and there will be mid-term projects for 2022. For example, we are looking at uh, the construction of 915 new sites in urban and suburban areas by the end of the year. We are looking at upgrading 4,589 existing 2G and 3G base stations to 4G, um, basically to expand 4G coverage and increase the speed by 2021 to upgrade 16,209 existing base stations at urban and suburban areas by the end of the year. Uh, for sunset 3G network and, uh, I mean, to su sunset 3G network and migrate the spectrum for 4G technology use by 2021. And this should further improve the speed uh, to fiberize some 1.6 million uh, kilometer by 2021 and another 929,000 by mid uh, 2022 or by, by the end of 2022 to construct 1,661 new sites across Malaysia to extend the mobile 4G coverage in rural and remote areas by 2022. The second phase, and I think this is what everyone is expecting to hear from me, the migration to 5G is like a hijra. Huh? <laughs> the migration to 5G will follow once the robust platform under 4G is achieved, and this is in line with the RMK Tref planning. Now, while we are focusing to optimize our 4G access, uh, there is a need for 5G preparation. And this is the reason for having the 5G demonstration projects running across the country involving nine verticals such as agriculture, digital healthcare, education, entertainment and the media, manufacturing, manufacturing and processing, oil and gas, smart city, smart transportation and tourism. To date, we have 71 5G use cases demonstration led by the private sectors, namely Salcom, DG, E.co, Maxis, Petronas, Telecom Malaysia, U-Mobile, YTL, and their ecosystem partners, consisting of digital solution providers, ministries and agencies, integrators and vendors. These use cases are demonstrated across seven states, Kedah, Pahang, Penang, Pahang has got nothing to do with me, that's right. Kedah, Pahang, Penang, Perak, Selangor, Tengganu and Wilayah Puskutuan, with a total industry investment of 
RM131 million. This project focuses on facilitating and cultivating the development of a holistic and inclusive 5G ecosystem, which stimulates the demand as well as adoption. As various industries adopt 5G, it could positively influence other industries' contribution rate to the GDP, effectively allowing the country to produce and manufacture more high-quality goods and services, ultimately benefiting the rakyat with improved earnings and affordability. To the, invest, to the innovators, service providers and relevant stakeholders, this is indeed an exciting time for Malaysia. We have extended the period of the demonstration until 31st December this year, and I urge you to come forward and participate in the 5G demonstration projects. It is very important to note that Malaysia is expecting the improvement of connectivity for both fiber fiber optic and 4G as a means to ensure that the 5G rollout will be done in an efficient and effective manner. Remember, I started by saying we, we need to decide what do we do and how do we do it. To ensure that the 5G rollout will be done in an efficient and effective manner, thereby benefiting the consumers without a significant increase in cost of service, industries being able to roll out their respective solutions using, uh, using 5G, and of course, for the service providers, an expeditious use of the invested network. We need such a healthy ecosystem that we believe will significantly contribute to the national agenda of Digital Malaysia and thereby the national GDP. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the government is serious on 5G and the digital trajectory of the nation. Uh, we have had already the 5G demonstration projects on the ground for a couple of years now, and we are extending it until the end of the year. The end of the year. Uh, we have had a one-month very fruitful discussion among all the stakeholders and players on what needs to be done uh, until at least the next two or three years. And uh, by mid of this month or by the third week of this month, if everything is uh, moving according to plan, the government will be announcing a proper uh, comprehensive uh, fourth industrial revolution and uh, digital roadmap. So I look forward to listening to some of the conversation this morning and uh, if I may also request that uh, before Wednesday morning if I can have a look at the findings of this conversation that would be very handy in uh, helping whatever that we are trying to announce uh, to enrich whatever that the government is planning to, uh, to announce either on the second or the third week of this month. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.